Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about all the uh, modifications and work I've been doing in the past week on the multi-material upgrade. So for the people that are new to this channel, what we're doing is a multi-material upgrade that should be compatible with almost any 3D printer. Uh, and that runs on Marlin on a single board. So there's a board to control your printer and it's the same board that is going to control the multi-material upgrade. So we'll go over quite a few things. Uh, so first off, we have had our first really successful result. Uh, so it's uh, this little turtle that we had already attempted in the past. Uh, and when I say in the past, five days ago, and it failed when I attempted to, when the MMU attempted to load in the black filament because the black filament had never been used in the entire print. Uh, so it was not primed and the tip was really badly shaped. And there were a lot of other small assembly errors on the physical upgrade itself, which I've all fixed and uh, it's printing really well now. I'll also be talking uh, about the uh, rotary encoder and magnetic encoder. And this is pretty much it in terms of the uh, modifications I've made to the entire thing. There were also a few small uh, physical modifications. So yeah, I have a lot of stuff to talk about in this video. So uh, I'll probably have timestamps in the video so you can skip uh, to the parts that you're interested into. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's roll the intro and get right into it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is the actual print that we made and uh, that was successful. We have had a lot of semi-successful things. Every time I printed something, I learned something from it and uh, we were able to uh, improve on the design and uh, also the slicer settings. So this print is almost perfect. There may be a slight bit of over extrusion, but other than that, uh, not much. There's also some stringing. It's not really noticeable on the model, uh, but I, I did notice it and you can notice it. So uh, yeah, there was a bit of stringing, but it's not related to the multi-material upgrade. It's actually related to my slicer settings. And I had a really good proof of that when doing the print uh, that just finished my left. As you can see, even when working with the Ender 3, which printed perfectly um, when I was not using some weird slicer settings, uh, now it has that many strings. So I'm gonna sh shoot some B-roll of it so you can see it clearly. Uh, but it's the, the exact same file that I used uh, for the previous turtle. Uh, and uh, yeah, I printed by mistake and it did the exact same stringing on a single uh, bottom style setup. Uh, so it means that it's strictly uh, uh, slicer related. Uh, so now that I've talked about this print, uh, I'm going to talk about the other print I can see, which uh, just finished printing, uh, and it's the idler body. It has had a few small modifications. Uh, so the ones uh, that are clear are the uh, actual reinforcements uh, on the sides, and these help a lot with two things. So first off, uh, it resists torsion way better. So as you can see, it doesn't flex as much as the previous model. Uh, and it also helps with printing. So uh, that really thin wall on this side that was uh, created to save on material um, is actually supported by those small reinforcements. So it makes printing a lot easier and the model a lot sturdier, which is exactly what I was going for. A second pro of this little modification is that it looks way better uh, than before. Uh, and uh, yeah, now what I'm going to talk about is uh, the reddit post. Uh, so I made a reddit post using that little turtle um, as an image and it uh, worked really well. And also a lot of uh, people commented on that reddit post and gave me both questions and advice. And uh, one of them was actually really, really useful. So uh, I'm going to post it on screen right now. Uh, but essentially, uh, some guy asked me why I was using rotary encoder and that using a rotary encoder as I was trying to do and as I'm trying to do right now uh, is going to fail because uh, the mechanism is simply going to be worn out uh, after just a few prints. And uh, at first that was a surprising fact to me, but actually when doing the calculations, uh, I quickly realized what they meant. Uh, so the, these type of rotary encoders, I typically rated for about 50K to 100K cycles. And uh, if 
you attach, let's say, a two centimeter wheel, uh, so a two centimeter radius wheel onto that and then connect it to a filament, uh, that means that uh, after uh, printing two spools of filament, uh, I think this spool is about 320 meters. Uh, filament so after printing two full one kilogram spools um, you would have already worn out the uh, rotary encoder enough uh, to be in a really let's say dangerous zone in terms of failure so it would have exceeded the life expectancy by simply printing two kilograms of PLA or any material um, but yeah this is really not good enough so we cannot change that rotary encoder every two spools it just doesn't make any sense uh, so the solution that I came up with uh, is actually to use a magnetic rotary encoder. Uh, so I'm thinking about the AS5600. Uh, so a lot of work regarding that has already been done inside Marlin, um, but not for my application. So it has been done uh, in order to control, uh, so to have a closed loop system uh, with the stepper motors. So essentially you have one on each stepper motor axis and then uh, you're able to check uh, whether each extruder move, uh, not extruder, but each motor move has been correctly done in real life. And that means that you can actually correct when moves don't go well. And that means that typically, typically during a print, you could take your nozzle, skip 50, 100 steps, and uh, still have the nozzle go back to where it was initially and continue the print without failing. So this is uh, some really good stuff. It's not final, it's a bit, hacky right now, uh, but I feel like I could use uh, the work that they have done inside of Marlin uh, in order to, um, well, use the those I2C uh, magnetic rotary encoders uh, as a smart filament flow sensor, and uh, those are, have an extremely high life cycle, so uh, that means that we have zero problems regarding that. So yeah, it's uh, really nice that someone mentioned that to me because it saved me a lot of dev time because now I know that the rotary encoder won't work um, and I don't have to dev anything for it. Uh, and also developing and adding in the AS5600, so the magnetic rotary encoder, shouldn't take me too much work because as I said again, Marlin uh, has also some kind of similar feature implemented um, even if it still needs a, a bit of uh, modification in order to work for my application. Uh, another thing I want to address uh, is something that I said on Discord. So in order to test direct drive, I have to buy first uh, a lot of filaments. I also have to buy a direct drive upgrade for my Ender 3. Um, I have to get some filaments and electronics. I basically have to build a second MME2. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, essentially what is happening is that I'm running out of filament. So uh, as you can see, this spool is essentially empty. I have basically four empty spools down there in my filament rack. This one is completely empty as well. So yeah, I'm running out of filaments and uh, the ones that are currently plugged into my, uh, uh, the multi material upgrade on my other printer are either also running out or simply uh, out of uh, silk PLA filament and those are not ideal for prototyping. Uh, so yeah, I had a lot of stuff to get and uh, those small things add up and cost a lot in the end and I was just not ready to pay that at that time so I just said that I would buy it in the future but not right now and uh, Paul Lewis actually helped a lot and uh, got me basically everything I needed in order to get the direct drive upgrade and uh, to start working on this uh, so huge thanks to you uh, you really basically made this uh, project uh, 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 pos not possible but you made this a lot faster and your contribution means that I'm going to be able to start devving and working on the uh, multi material upgrade uh, for direct drive setup in the following month. So as soon as I receive the parts um, and compared to what it would have been if you hadn't helped me. So uh, it would have been like literally a month before I got either enough money from uh, user testing and the stuff I'm doing on the side. Uh, in order to buy all of that uh, myself or uh, use some of my money uh, directly in order to uh, invest in this product. I would have done it, but it would have been a bit slower and took a bit more time. So once again, thanks a lot for that. Okay, so sorry if I'm not talking very loud. My entire family is sleeping and it's quite late here, so I don't want to wake them up. Uh, I also want to add that you did not simply buy me a 
what I needed to develop Terra Drive support. You also bought me some extra filament and actually quite a bit of filament. Uh, you bought me some special filaments that I needed for uh, both personal projects and to demo the capabilities uh, of the multi-material upgrade. Uh, so this is way more than I ever expected from for any donation or from anyone. And uh, yeah, this is really more of a gift uh, than simply buying me the tools I need to develop this. Uh, so I can't thank you enough and uh, yeah, I think we'll go back to the video now. Okay, yeah, so uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything. Oh, oh yeah, no, one last thing. Um, the uh, documentation, so I'm working on documentation for advanced users, so for people that are comfortable with uh, software, with programming, uh, with configuring Marlin, that already have tweaked their printer, modified their printers, uh, that have a lot of knowledge regarding 3D printing, I'm doing, uh, Doc documentation on my multi-material upgrade and also a small build guide uh, in kind of like a, a documentation format uh, so you need to be experienced in order to be able to build it uh, but if you want to contribute or just really can't wait for that upgrade uh, you can build this little beta version of the upgrade and uh, help me with this project as well um, so join the discord and I will update you on that uh, in there but there is an upgrade uh, no documentation coming and uh, if you're an advanced user, uh, you can consider it. If you're just starting to get into 3D printing and just starting to uh, configure Marlin for yourself, I highly recommend you wait uh, because as long as I don't have any uh, closed loop feedback regarding the filament being loaded in and loaded out. So basically as soon as I, as long as I haven't implemented the, uh, the um, encoder, this, upgrade won't be user friendly so that means that on shutdown if a filament is loaded in when you start your printer up uh, the upgrade has no way of telling whether the filament is loaded in or not so uh, basically that means that you have to manually um, unload the filament align all of them at the entry of the merger at the right position and yeah it just takes a lot of user attention and uh, it's a way more involved process right now uh, than I expect it will be in the future. And also in the future, I'll be doing a, a very extensive video about how to set everything up and it should be way simpler to set up and uh, do everything you need to do. But if you are um, considering doing this build right now, uh, and even in the future, uh, just join the Discord because I have a help channel in there and you can get help very quickly, either from me or from other contributors. And uh, yeah, I believe that honestly, this is quite an advanced upgrade and you will most likely need help uh, in order to complete it. But I mean, I'm, I'm really uh, open to anything. And if someone sends a message, I can help them maybe even modify some 3D file for them. Uh, so don't hesitate and go in the Discord, ask questions. Uh, speaking of the Discord, I will have it linked down below. This is a really good place if you want to either contribute for this project because I have an update channel. Uh, where I post regular updates on the project. Um, you can also, uh, I will also have the GitHub link down below as well. Uh, so if you want to take a look at the 3D files or take a look at the code, this is a good place to do so. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So have a nice day and I will see you guys later.